Hi, continuing on our Wi-Fi 7 topics, I'd like to give a brief idea of the coexistence measures that Wi-Fi 7 is pursuing at a physical layer level. And the interesting thing is that it's not just with the previous generation, but it's also becoming friendly with potentially future generations as well. So this definitely is an interesting new aspect. So let's go and explore that. My name is Srikanth and I'm with NanoCell Networks. So Wi-Fi generations, let's say in five gigahertz as an example, but also in 2.4, do not necessarily get new spectrum to operate on. So for example, uh, 802.11a, 11n, 11ac, 11ax all operate in 5 gigahertz. It could be such that you might have networks of these types all in the same area, devices of all these types connecting to, let's say, one generation. Let's say in your home you had 11ax AP, but you had a variety of these devices belonging to this generation, your neighbor might have 11AC parked on the same channel as your 11AX. How do they coexist? Which is, how do they not you know, become chaotic? So one way is that uh, the, the so-called physical layer protocol data unit, PPDU, starts off with a preamble and a header which is common across the various generations, okay? as you can see here. In fact, the only time that the 802.11 standards explode a different path, which is the 11N green field, is actually not very popular at all. So which means that you know, we fell back in 11AC to the trusted method of a common preamble which stretches to the earliest standards in the OFTM. And then using this so-called legacy phi header to spoof a length such that none of the generations, rather the earlier generations, would actually think of even transmitting, okay? Which is the sort of, you can say, the guts of the coexistence where they don't disturb each other, okay? So idea is that we have this continuing thread across the various generations. The only time we did was this green field mode, which is practically absent. So we all understand each other with that common language. And we use this phi header to kind of convey the length of this transmission indirectly so that the previous generation does not disturb this transmission. And we add some extra measures for the auto detection of the specific type of the standard or PPDU. That's why you find a repeated LSIG in 11AX or something with a QBPSK or something slightly different. So what does 11BE, EHT or Wi-Fi 7 do about this? Remember, it also has to operate in 2.4 five, six, where there are previous generations which are going to use these type of PPDUs. So it would obviously have to be friendly with them. So it'll have to start off in a similar way. But then we also talked about something where we are doing something nice about the future. What is it? So if you look at it, for the previous generation, we're being nice with all of this. Auto detections comes by repetition, but then 11AX also did repetition. So slight difference in the length signal there between the 11AX types and the 11BE uh, Wi-Fi 7 types are there to distinguish between those. So those were all nice for the previous generations. And auto detection. What about the future generation? This is where 11B and Wi-Fi 7 or EHT takes a new step where we introduce what is called as a USIG where explicit version number of the standard starting with 11BE or Wi-Fi 7 is going to be mentioned. 
Why is this important? While we are nice to the previous generations, etc., remember the new generations need not struggle with auto detecting whether this is the correct which generation PPDU it is. For that, this USIC has been brought on board. So this means from now on, while we do this to be nice to all the ones before this, we will also make it friendly for the new generation to be able to infer that this is a new generation transmission. Okay, this is the first time we are doing it. Remember, Wi-Fi generations have to coexist in the same spectrum, in the same place, etc. So it's, it's different from typically, say, the cellular generations. I hope you found it useful. For more, please look at our website. We also offer courses through Wi-Fi Now Academy. Thank you.